I have grown my handmade dog collar business to becoming a number one pet product store on Etsy in the same techniques that I used in my Etsy shop that I grown to the top 1%, I have taken to Amazon handmade and I become the number one in dog handmade dog collars. So that technique I will share with you guys in this video. So make sure to watch to the end. Hi guys, my name is Vlad. I'm the owner of Tag Pup, and like I said, is the number one pet product store on Etsy in terms of daily sales. You can check with E Rank. You will see that my daily sales outrank that of my competitors. So. If you're new to this channel, this is the kind of content you're gonna get from somebody that actually does really well on the platforms, on the handmade platforms. So if you are a handmade store and you are trying to manufacture or handmake your products and you wanna scale your business, make sure to follow this channel, subscribe, hit the bell notification because sometimes I do give you time sensitive information, right? Christmas is coming, uh, you need to stock up, you need to get ready, you need to have a good mindset setting up for the season. So make sure to subscribe to this channel because I will give you tips and tricks to do that so that you can scale your business out of your room and potentially maybe to a, into a shop. All right, without any further ado. So recently, as you guys been following me on my channel, you've been noticing that I haven't posted anything in a long time. And that's because I've been having a really good problem. I've been scaling so fast that I needed to focus on cash flow and hiring people. Amazon Handmade has exploded beyond my beyond what I thought was possible. Um, I'm getting so many sales. I turn off all my advertisement on Amazon Handmade and I'm actually doubling, oftentimes doubling my sales with just two listings than that of my whole whole Etsy shop. So it's been bonkers. I'm kind of nervous for, for Christmas season. That's why I've been getting ready for that. But that's a good problem. How do you get to that good problem? So if you are selling on Etsy or Amazon Handmade, this is what you need to know, okay? So the first thing that you need to think about or you need to really discover is an MVP. MVP is a minimum viable product. You might have seen other manufacturers, other people talking about this. When you have a minimum viable product, it is a product that requires several things, right? It is simple. It is something that you can manufacture you know how to do you can do a lot of it you can do it at a lower cost if you wanted to if you really put your mind to it you can manufacture it at a lower cost and the last one and this is kind of unique to me is that you have keyword variations in that product so for example not that this is an MVP but if you have a you know pillowcase right you're selling couch pillowcases you can do different variations you can do Christmas you can do fall you can do porch pillow Christmas porch pillow, you know couch and porch and 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 then you have all these all these designs that you can now rename that if people are looking for, if it's Valentine's, a pink heart, you know, whatever. If there's keywords attached to that product that have a variation to it, then you ha that, that's a beautiful thing to have with your MVP because that will allow you to spread yourself on the Etsy or on any platform on many, many different corners of that platform. And when you have the ability to manufacture this proce product at a better, faster, and a cheaper cost, it brings me to point number two, and that is price. No matter how much you will tell me that handmade products don't need to be cheaper, Yes, that is true, but you try to put your product on sale and you will see your sales go up. You will see that there's more people buying from you than if you didn't put on a sale. So which means if you can reduce your cost, you are going to increase your sales. That's because for the most part, it improves your conversion rate. Not only do more people buy from you, but because more people buy from you, you're converting more customers, thus allowing you to grow on the algorithm. So if you can manufacture this product, and when I say manufacture, I, it's, it's an umbrella term. Handmaking is part of that whole term, so just don't, don't let that scare you off. Um, but when you're manufacturing that product, a better, better process, you have a, a better system going, you're gonna improve your, your price. A lot, more, a lot of people focus so much on the listing, keeping their price as is, and oftentimes they're print on demand and somebody else is manufacturing their product for them and the price is pretty static. And I would recommend for those people, by the way, try to manufacture, it's not that bad. I bought a sewing machine for a hundred bucks and I didn't know how to sew and I had to figure this out. Now I have specialized sewing equipment. It's really not that hard. You figured out how to drive, you figured out how to survive through this crazy times. I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to use a sewing machine or, or any kind of machines. But when you work on your manufacturing, you can reduce your price like you have the freedom to reduce your price and improve your quality so that's something that you really really need to think about if your competitors then think about think of it this way your competitors might be really their listings might be very snazzy very top-notch their branding looks amazing but 
if manufacturing is something that they, they're not good at, at some point you're going to outrank them. You're going to outrank them because your price is going to be better. You're going to outrank them because your quality is going to be better. Now, if you're saying, well, handmade stuff are usually has better quality. No, it doesn't. Some products, yes, but for the most product, people that sell on Etsy that use machinery tend to do better and their product tend to do much better in terms of quality. When you have a good process and you focus more time in your shop and then on your listing, you will see that that's going to bleed into your listing. It's going to bleed into your conversion rate and your, your, your quality. And you're going to be shipping on time because if you have a good process or quality uh, of manufacturing, you're going to ship out your products on time. And that is another reason why you're going to start growing. These are very simple things, but I'm telling you, it, it manifests itself on Amazon Handmade when I have applied that. All right, so number three, and this is a very important one. It kind of stems a little bit off from that price in manufacturing. Having flexibility in your profit margins. What do I mean by that? Okay, so when you have, say, a good manufacturing process, you're focusing, you're putting all your efforts on that, and you're able to get your manufacturing to 40, 50, 60 percent, maybe even 70 percent, and if you have that flexibility, there's several ways you're going you're gonna to benefit that, right? When you do sales, you can do sales and you can still be profitable, right? You can, if you're starting a listing, if it's a new listing and you want to give it an edge to your to growing on the algorithm, you can decrease the price even below your, your you know, lowest sell, selling competitors and you're still profitable. Now, maybe not as profitable as you will be when you get to the top and put your price back to normal, but you'll still be profitable on your way up and you have the ability to do that because sometimes that climbing to the top of the listing or the top of the keyword might take you a while. So you need to be sustainable during that time. And on the back end, the reason why you want to have flexibility in your profit margins is when you have more money, essentially you're putting more money in your pocket. Who, uh, who doesn't like that? But in terms of business, right, if we're not spending it on ourselves and we're putting the money back in the business, what that does is uh, it allows you to buy uh, your inventory at a higher quantity, which means your price per unit goes down, right? Thus giving you more profit margins, thus giving you more flexibility in the profit margins and your price. And also, when you, by the way, this is a side note, if you have the variations in your, in your product and you are able to make, say, 100 listings, 200 listings out of one product, then that creates a little bit stability for your sales, right? You're not, you have a lot of sales and then you have no sales. You have a lot, you know, you have a stability and each day you're generally getting this many sales. And if your profit margins are good, you have the flexibility in now having cash flow. Cash flow allows you to then lease the equipment, to buy equipment, to have the ability to, um, improve your process, improve your manufacturing even more so when you can lease the equipment. Because when you lease the equipment, if let's say, for example, you do a two-year lease, and I know some of you guys might say out there, hey, not everybody can get a business loan. Sure, but you don't have to get a big machine. You can get go, go open up a credit card or something. Go to Joann's and buy a nice sewing machine. Whatever the case is, um, you, can, you can have cash flow that allows you to pay off the a certain kind of equipment, which that equipment will improve your process, thus giving you more profit margins. So when you have flexibility, and again, I'm going back to the manufacturing, because like I said, people spend way too much time on the listing, which is, it's totally fine. You do your keyword research, you know, your proper tags and all that stuff. But once you've gotten that, that, that down, don't overthink it. Focus inside your room, inside your shop, how you're manufacturing the process, because that will do wonders. And that's why I've, I've thrived well on Amazon. It's just I've taken the same manufacturing process with the same product that's done really well on Etsy. I've taken that on Amazon Handmade, and it worked. The fourth one, and this is a very important one. The fourth one is have the consistency in your conversion rate by have an availability in your stock and availability in variation. What do I mean by that? So let's just say we're selling t-shirts. Let's just say our competitors are really good photographers and they did done some really good t-shirt um, photos, right? If they've run out of the size medium and you don't, now you have, le you have a little bit, your photos are not the best, but you're, you're really good at inventory and you're able to keep stock while they ran out of inventory. Well, if they ran at one out of the four sizes, they are potentially losing 25% of their potential sales that decreases their conversion rate significantly enough for you to maybe outrank them if they hold it long enough or if they do it often enough. So if you are good at keeping your inventory, that alone can make you very competitive on the marketplace. The second thing on that, on that note is that if you have the availability in 
product types or variations, right? When I'm selling dog collars, I sell extra large, large, medium, small, extra small for teacup dogs, right? I'm, I'm supplying a high variety of pet owners, right? And I'm also providing a leash. Now, Amazon Handmaids allows you to do a lot more options that you can, you know, allow customers to customize the product than Etsy. Etsy only gives you two drop down and one personalization box, but that allows you to really supply as many customers that come to your listing as possible, thus improving your conversion rate. Because if your competitors only have large, medium, and small, and that's it, and they don't have a leash, well, you're, you're obviously going to have a better conversion rate because you're supplying more customers. So that really is uh, really overlooked in terms of um, what really gives you most sales. That indirectly will improve your sales in the long term. All right, so the last one, I love this one, and this is very important. So if once you've found your MVP, that product that you can manufacture, that you're going to work your butt off to manufacture at a cheaper cost at a higher quality, uh, and your price is going to be very competitive, you're going to be one of the most competitive prices out there, you're going to have the flexibility in your profit margins so that you're going to be moving around up and down the, 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 the price point, and you're going to have cash flow that's going to improve your back end, your, again, your manufacturing and then you're going to um, you're going to have everything available for your customers to target as larger of an audience as possible in terms of variations. Once you have all of that figured out, you are now ready for number five. And number five is you test, test, and test. Like I said, when you have a product that has variation, you don't know what product is going to sell well at each time of the year or in general. So you're going to need to post a new listing, if not every day, at least every week. You're just going to post, post, post and you will see one of these or two or three of these products starting to really take off and you keep doing that and then you take your two highest selling products in terms of image that that are, are non-seasonal you take it to amazon handmade and it's going to do wonders it's exactly what i did with my product right i did I focused on the manufacturing, I focused on price, I focused on the, having a product that has variation, and I took the highest selling product, and I took it to Amazon, and it worked. And so um, hopefully that was useful. If it was, make sure to like this video and comment on the bottom if you have any questions or you have any products that you're looking at, are they MVPs? Please ask me in the, converse, uh, in the comments. I would love to have a conversation with you. Unfortunately, right now, I don't do consulting. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me if I do consulting. I don't do that because I've been really busy, busy with my business, and I also want to be putting together the course that I've been promised you guys uh, about opening up a whole new Etsy shop and showing you guys how I do that. Um, I, I, I'm still working on that. I'm working on the outline. I'm working on how I'm going to film it. And uh, so, so I have a lot of stuff on my hands. Uh, but if you want to have a discussion in the comment section, I'd be more than happy to do that. And until next time, have a good one.